For some reason, Moonies get a rap for being a small crammed airplane that they're uncomfortable in the interior. Well, uh, I've got my tape measure out. Let's just measure it up and see how it sizes up compared to other airplanes. All right, let's take a look at the width. Between the panels inside, we've got about 41 inches. It's a little bit more between the windows. It's about 43 between the windows. That's not really usable shoulder width, but still makes you feel a little bit more space. Let's take a look at the height. That's about 45 inches. Yeah, there's some different things that hang down, but uh, overall 45 inches of height. So there's definitely not a lot of excess space above the head. I've got about three inches above my head to the ceiling. I'm 5'10", but that doesn't mean that if you're taller, you're gonna hit your head on the ceiling because as you slide the seat further back to make more leg room, you actually end up recovering a little bit of headroom as well because the uh, seats slide down as they go back. Now in a Mooney, you really got to slide your seat way forward to be able to reach the rudder pedals. This is kind of my loose fit where I can barely reach them. Um, this is my, maybe what I might do in route. So right now, down to the rudder pedals, I've got about 45 inches to my hip to the back of the seat, maybe 47 inches. Now I can slide the seat up one more click, especially if I want to make a little bit more room for the person behind. If it's a little swirly and I want to be able to comfortably work the rudder pedals a lot. Let's see how much space that leaves in the seat behind me. Plus an additional 25 inches of leg room that extend into the leg well underneath the panel. 24 inch long pilot window, 13, almost 14 inches high. Now, Moonies aren't known for being the best of visibility. The windshield is quite long. It, you got over 20 inches of windshield there, but vertically, because it's so sloped, there's actually only about nine inches of forward visibility straight out the front. So as you can see, the panel actually dominates some of your view and you end up having more than half of the view being the panel. Being a traveling machine built particularly for IFR flight, that makes sense. From the back seat to the panel, 66 inches for the front and rear seats combined. With the pilot seat slid up to be fully on the rudder pedals, leaves 14 inches of space behind the pilot seat. So in the rear seat with the 14 inches of legroom with the seat slid forward, my knees are not touching the seat in front. I know that if I fly economy class in an airliner, I usually sit there with my knees wedged in the seat in front. So that's quite a bit actually more comfortable. Put my feet a little bit underneath the seat. I can bring them up. But also, even with this car seat back here, which is about comparable to a petite adult, I have a decent amount of room to be able to spread my legs, and that's just being in halfway across that rear cabin. Taking a look at the rear width, we've got about 40 inches of width in the rear. And in terms of height, looks like it's about the same as in the front, 45 inches of height, so quite comparable spacing in the back. Now I will say it is more comfortable in the front because of those extended uh, footwells. The rudder pedals are actually in the engine compartment. They actually protrude past the panel and partly into the engine compartment. So even though the cabin appears kind of small and moony, by sitting with your legs underneath the panel and into the engine compartment, it allows you to slide the seats quite a ways forward and leaves a decent amount of room in the back. The rear seat windows in an M20J are quite long. So let's take a measure and look at those. We got a 31 inch long window, 12 inches high. The baggage compartment is adequate, but not super roomy. In the mid-body Mooney M20J, about 35 inches across, 23 inches deep toward the bottom, but because of the sloping rear seat, it narrows down to about 19 inches towards the top. And then in terms of height, you get about 35 inches of height to the ceiling. Now with 120 pound capacity and decent space, the baggage compartment isn't too uh, tight, but the biggest limitation is the door. The baggage door is uh, not quite 17 inches across and uh, about 20 inches this way, but there's also some curvature and other elements to it. So it can be limiting to what you can get through the baggage door. Sometimes you might have to put it in through the main door and across the back seat into the baggage compartment in order to be able to get it to fit. 
So as you see, uh, we got a chance to take a look at the interior and discover that it's actually quite roomy in a Mooney M20J. They're a low sitting airplane. They're very sleek and aerodynamic. So uh, the designers and engineers at Mooney decided to uh, compromise the bulkiness and shape of it. It's not a big barn. It's just super um, uh, aerodynamic and narrow to make it as aerodynamically efficient as possible. But uh, without too much compromise of the interior, it is still a reasonably spacious interior, very comfortable, reasonably wide. In fact, it's wider than the interior on a Beechcraft Bonanza or a Piper Cherokee, Piper Arrow. So as you can see, it's a bit of a myth that booties are crammed and tight. Uh, they are very sleekly designed for aerodynamic efficiency. It's a bit of an illusion that it's so tight because they don't have as much ceiling height as other airplanes. They're more rounded, less, uh, uh, less boxy, but they are a comfortable airplane, not to mention it'll get you there faster and it'll be well worth it. I'm Mike, Mooney 201er. Check out my Mooney flying videos on my channel, Mooney 201er, and come along for a flying adventure next time.